This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, February 2. So glad you could join us. Home Affairs Minister Wilfred Abrams this evening confirmed that several inmates and staff at Dodds Prison have tested positive for COVID-19. In a statement, he revealed that his staff member in the kitchen, who recently took ill, tested positive for the viral illness and as a result, all associated inmates and staff were tested between last Saturday and Monday. From that number, 18 male inmates tested positive on their first test and another 26 received positive results today from their second test. All the positive inmates have since been isolated and contacts have been quarantined. As it relates to staff, since the first officer tested positive, two other kitchen staff have since tested positive. Today, prison authorities took a decision to rapid test the incoming shift of prison officers and five of these have tested positive. They are not linked to the kitchen outbreak. Minister Abrams assured the situation is under control and prison operations have not been significantly affected. In today's COVID-19 update, a total of 681 people, 307 males and 374 females, tested positive for the viral illness on Tuesday from the 2,600 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprised 130 persons under the age of 18 and 551 who were 18 years and older. There were 171 people in isolation facilities, while 10,543 were in home isolation. A 60-year-old unvaccinated woman passed away from the viral illness on Tuesday at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility, bringing the death toll to 282. A new batch of AstraZeneca vaccines are expected to arrive on island tomorrow. Co-coordinator of the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, Dr. Elizabeth Ferdinand, said the previous batch expired on Monday, January 31. She added that the AstraZeneca vaccine should be available at all vaccination sites by Friday this week. Members of the public who did not receive the vaccine after January 31 are encouraged to visit any of the sites on Friday or thereafter for the first and second doses as well as boosters. The other vaccines, Pfizer, Sinopharm and Johnson & Johnson, are currently available. The new Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs, Kurt Humphrey, was officially sworn into office today and he's ready to get to work. Humphrey, a former manager of the Child Care Board, says his ministry is on course to overhaul the delivery of social services. In many ways, I'm actually just going home. I've been in this ministry for 12 years. And I look forward to returning and building on the work that Minister Ford, Cynthia Ford, would have done. Um, for me, some of the urgent priorities are restructuring the ministry. We have, as one of our important mandates as a government, to be able to make social services more acceptable to the people who need them. So we intend to amalgamate all the various departments to form a Department of Family Services. Um, I chaired that committee for the last few months um, for the Cabinet of Barbados, and um, Minister Ford obviously was on the committee. So we're pretty advanced in the restructuring of the social services. Hopefully within a year, it is something that we can bring to the public, a reformed, refashion social services department where people who have to access these services feel as if they're given a fair deal you know many people complain as it stands now when they interact with departments that they're not treated well those are some of the things that they intend to address the social services department have to treat people as a priority and to make it much more uh, people-centered at the same time, Humphrey, who previously held the portfolio of maritime affairs and the blue economy, believes it's in good hands with Minister Adrian Ford and will therefore continue to grow. I think the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Blue Economy was able to do significant work in the three years, three and a half years. Um, I'm proud of the work we did in shipping. I'm proud of the work we've done in the markets and with fisheries. I'm very proud of the work we did in the port. Um, I think in many people's minds we were able to, to elevate a lot of these issues to be able to get to capture national attention and national debate and discussion. So I'm very happy about that. I think you can see the work that we did. And in the areas where you couldn't see the work we did, like a lot of the legislative um, changes that we made, you will see the benefits of those, I think, in a few years. So I'm very happy about the work. The reality is that the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Blue Economy may no longer exist, but that which we put in place still does. The primary components of the ministry are still together. Um, I speak to Minister Adrian Ford every day, who I think will be an amazing minister with responsibility for the blue economy and the green economy. Um, 
So I expect that the work we started will continue. I do not think necessarily that we're going to lose any of the energy, we're going to lose any of the advances that we were able to make. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, election fever is in the air in Antigua and Barbuda as the major political parties oil their machinery in anticipation of a poll. As we hear in this report from ABS News, electoral officials say they are ready. Right. We've now entered silly season, the colloquial term referring to the last few months leading up to a general election, where there is heightened political activity. As of November 30, 56,232 people have registered to vote. 91.3% of those electors are Antiguan and Barbuda nationals. Public Relations Officer for the Electoral Commission, Elisa Graham, says registration is a daily process. The registration units are operational and functional. There are three registration units that are currently not in place in their constituencies because of logistical reasons. As of October 31, 2021, St. George is the largest of the 17 constituencies with 5,421 electors. St. Philip South has the least with 1,197. And that number is scheduled to increase, of course, because, you know, persons are turning 18, persons are getting excited about registration, so it all depends. On the international front, in the United States, Pentagon spokesman John Kirby said today that Washington will send nearly 3,000 extra troops to Poland and Romania to shield Eastern Europe from a potential spillover from the crisis over the massing of Russian troops near Ukraine. The United States stands shoulder to shoulder with our NATO allies. The current situation demands that we reinforce the deterrent and defensive posture on NATO's eastern flank. We are moving uh, a, an additional force of about approximately 2,000 troops from the United States to Europe in the next few days. It's important that we send a strong signal to Mr. Putin and, frankly, to the world that NATO matters to the United States. It, NATO, it matters to our allies. And we have ironclad Article 5 commitments. Uh, an attack on one is an attack on, on all. And so uh, we know that, uh, that, uh, that he also bristles uh, at NATO, uh, about NATO. Uh, and uh, he has made the, no secret of that. Um, we are making it clear uh, that we're going to be prepared to defend our NATO allies if it comes to that. Hopefully it won't come to that. Nobody wants to see, as I said, conflict's not inevitable. There's no reason for, uh, there, th for there to be armed conflict in Ukraine or anywhere else on the European continent. And Mr. Putin uh, can go a long way to, to serving that end uh, by taking seriously the proposals that we have put forward diplomatically and by de-escalating through moving some of those troops away. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. <laughs>